Hey guys, I'm Gundam Pilot X. I'm a longtime fan of Type V3, and guess what? It's time for TV3. Let's do it. Welcome to TV3. On this week's episode, we'll be talking about Monster Hunter, a new model kit line from Kotobukiya. Today's my birthday. And of course, answering some of your comments and questions in the feedback section. As always, if you want to introduce a future installment of TV3, you can always do so by sending in your short little video clip to my email over at typev3 at gmail.com. You can also use the social media services such as Twitter or Instagram, and I'm sure I'll find your video there. Alright, so first up in the news are a couple of quick reveals over at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's web exclusives. And the first one is a DX Chagokin, Lil Draken, and Missile Pod for the SV62 Draken 3. Now, this set is basically just the two tiny blue jets and the sword and shield, and I believe a couple little base. Uh, display base adapters that will be attached onto the main toy that's obviously sold separately. I recently just bought the Draken 3. In fact, it just came out last week and it's currently somewhere across the Pacific Ocean flying its way over to me. Now, if I'm honest, I think the little Draken and all that kind of stuff, like the, the tiny little drones are horrendously awfully designed. They, they do not look appealing at all, especially the way that they're supposed to attach onto the VF. However, this is the only way that the Draken can get a sword and shield. Now, one of the reasons I like the Draken design so much and why it's one of my favorites is because it's a robot that's clearly designed to look like a knight. And a knight kind of needs a sword and shield. And I only want the sword and shield from the set. However, with those giant balloon add-ons, it's going to cost about a hundred bucks. And that's a lot of money for something that I don't really care for. Jury's still out whether I'll pick this up, but I just can't see myself paying for this entire set, especially when I hate 75% of it. Speaking of things I think are completely ridiculous, well, Bandai has also announced a new Figure Arts Zero. This is the Summer Lesson Girl from the VR game Summer Lesson. This is, if you guys don't know of this game, it's basically, I believe you are a Westerner and you're trying to tutor a Japanese girl in VR. It's weird, okay? There's some weird, like, sexual overtones while you're playing it and it's, um... It's jarring to say the least, but what's even stranger is that even though Bandai announced a Figuart Zero, which is going to be about, I don't know, a couple inches tall, like five, six, seven inches tall, they also announced the Tamashi Web Exclusive Human Sized Edition. This is a one-to-one -one scale girl. I'll leave it at that, you know, Japan... You do you, I, I, I got nothing. Alright, moving on into the world of Reveltech now, I don't really like Reveltech at the moment. Um, you know, Reveltech is like, I expect many, many import collectors, your first taste of toys from Japan. And then from then on, you moved on to something like Figma or Figuarts or Sentinel. And then you kind of ditched Reveltech. Well, Reveltech has been making a bit of a resurgence in the past couple of years, especially with their Marvel characters. And I got to say, I have been tempted, even though I know that my experiences with Reveltech in the past have told me to stay away. But I think they finally got me now. They have announced a couple of Monster Hunter characters based on the designs from Monster Hunter Cross or Monster Hunter Generations. And they're doing the female Kirin set, they're doing the Kaiser X set, and they're doing the Glavinus set. And they all look fantastic. I've heard great things about modern Revel Techs. I, I don't know how, how much I will believe about that, but... At the very least, I will probably pick these up and then, and then I'll make a decision going there on forwards. But these look great, especially that Glavinus set. I think that looks real cool. Kieran's also really neat. Yeah, who knew? Like, man, it's 2017 and I'm excited for some Revel Text. That's crazy. All right, last story this week is probably the thing I'm most excited for. In fact, it's probably the newest toy line that I'm most excited for for the rest of the year, and that is Kotobukiya have announced a new model kit line called Hexagear. Now, it borrows from their Frame Arm series as well as their modeling support goods, and it's a bit of a hybrid combination, and what they've done is they made a, a sort of Zoid-style animal mecha that also transforms into a vehicle. Now... A lot of you guys will know that I'm not really the biggest Zoids fan, and that's, that's basically just because I don't really like how the fact that it's just an animal. The fact that this changes into a vehicle really plays at my 
Transformers, transforming vibe thing, as well as Nexo Knights. Like the reason why I like Nexo Knights is because they're transforming vehicles, and that's exactly what this is. But the other thing that's crazy about this is that they're doing in scale pilots, and they're obviously sold separately, but these pilots can ride them, they're customizable. And of course, being entirely model kits, you can paint them and and kit bash them to whatever your heart's content, and I think they look pretty neat. Uh, they're in a strange scale, one twenty fourth. That means that the pilots are each going to be about uh, two and a and three quarter inches tall, and they'll retail for about sixteen hundred yen, which is a bit pricey when considering that you can get a high grade Gundam for about that amount. So. Yeah, who knows, but Kodo's always been a little bit more expensive than Bandai. The actual units themselves are doing a Rayblade Impulse, which is the Tiger bike, which I think looks amazing. And then they're doing the Voltrex, which is a T-Rex bike, which in concept is cooler, but it just, the design, the way they've executed is not exactly to my personal liking. So at this moment, I've, I've put down an order for the Tiger and one of the soldiers, uh, I believe it's the Pawn A1, the one with the sword. It's looking super neat. Again, the the big mech things are going to be retailing for about 5,000 yen and the little pilot's about 1,600. Coming out in August and I'm pumped. I, I can't wait to see how these turn out. All right, so I don't have a huge haul this week, but I did manage to pick up a couple things here and there. First up is that I got the Titans Return Trigger Happy. Now, Trigger Happy, I heard a lot of really cool things about this toy when it first got released, I think, late last year, early this year. Uh, and specifically, it's about the transformation. And this toy is awesome to transform. Like, if you just want something to fiddle with with your hands and doesn't feel like it's been designed for you know, an infant, then this is definitely the toy to pick up. I love the way it transforms. I love the look of its uh, space jet mode. I wish I liked the look of the robot mode a bit more. It, there's nothing really wrong about it. I just find it a little boring. Now, that could be helped out by an addition of a couple paint apps or whatnot, but I think just generally speaking, you know, Titans Return, for as much as I like the toy line, They've really decided to design a lot of their robot aesthetics very close to the G1 designs, and the G1 designs are very simple and blocky, and I and I understand why they did it. You know, it's cool. It, it appeals to the older collectors, the people who are looking for, you know, their older toys just updated, and that's cool too, but a part of me does miss the 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 sort of classics aesthetic that happened a couple of years ago where they were sort of G1 but they were sort of something new like I like that nice little balance I feel like with masterpiece we have the G1 stuff uh and when it comes to retail toy lines I just I'd like it if they just were a bit more original in design so but nevertheless trigger happy is a very good transformer probably the best deluxe of all the titans return releases i've played with so far and i mean that in the sense that it's the best toy to play with uh, as opposed to is it the best one in terms of uh character or or looks or collectability jury's still out but this is the one i've been having the most fun with like I mentioned earlier, today, March the 20th, is my birthday, and over the weekend I celebrated it with a couple of my friends, and they got me something small because they knew that I liked LEGO, and specifically LEGO Star Wars. So they got me this right here. This is the LEGO Star Wars Sergeant Jin Urso. Now, I've always wanted to try one of these LEGO action figure things just to see what they were like, because, you know, I've just been super curious about it. Uh, they kind of know that I like female female leads, and, and so what better play, what better figure to pick up than this? Uh, on top of that, they also know that I loved K2SO, and I especially love Alan Tudyk, so they got me K2SO. I've yet to pick up a K2SO figure. I could never find the Black Series around me, and the SH Figure Arts version was just a bit too expensive for my liking, so this seems like the perfect way to go, and uh, I'm pumped to build this. Now, of course, you'll probably have noticed that I am wearing my Mercedes team shirt today, and that is because Formula One returns this weekend with the first race in Australia, and uh, you all know that I'm a Mercedes fan, or more specifically, I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan, so to celebrate, of course, I had to buy the Speed Champions Mercedes, what's this called, AMG Patronus Formula One team set, because I really wanted the Lewis Hamilton car of course there's nico rosberg but i really just wanted the lewis hamilton car yeah so the set looks real cool i've always wanted a podium that's probably the next thing i wanted for for race car sets now 
just looking at the set, I already know I'm not going to like it as much as I like the set from two years ago, which was the Ferrari truck. I feel like this is probably my favorite Lego set, and it just... It's basically encompasses everything I want out of Lego set. Like it's self-contained, it's large, but you know, it still has everything inside it. And I still feel like if you want the definitive Formula One experience package, this is the way to go. But if you're a Mercedes fan, how could you ignore this? The green, the color of green, I'm, I don't know how I feel about that yet. I have yet to open the box, so I don't know what the actual plastic looks like, but going off just the picture here, it's a little too green for my liking. Uh, the Patronus green has a bit more aqua in it. And uh, this is, might just be a little too, like, uh, I don't know, Christmas tree looking to me. But we'll see how it turns out. I'm pumped to open it up. Uh, oh, and of course, because they can't actually get the licensing for the drivers themselves, you can bet I'm going to go and look for a minifigure at the Lego store with a black head and put that on for Lewis Hamilton. Uh, but yeah, pretty pumped. This set looks incredible. Also, probably way too expensive for what it is, but whatever. That's Formula One. Everything's too expensive. All right, our first question comes from Badman, and he wants to know my thoughts on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and if I'll ever review the Medicos figures. So, I have a friend, a very close friend of mine, who loves JoJo. He's loved JoJo ever since I suppose it made its huge explosion here in the West. And every time we see each other, he always tries to get me to watch it. And it's gotten to the point where I chose to never watch it just to spite him, just to annoy him. And it worked. And of course, that means I'll never watch JoJo. So... It's a cruel joke, but it's one that I have to carry out for the rest of my life. So no, I will not be watching JoJo. And no, I will not be reviewing those figures. Crown wants to know my thoughts on frame arms. I think frame arms is super cool. The idea that they just give you the frame and then they give you all these armor plates and then you can just customize it to how you see fit. It's just... It allows for a much easier build and play experience and even customization experience because you could just buy different frame arm sets, right? And then you could just stack them on. I think that's that's really neat. I've never tried them out, but I've only heard great things about them. Uh, if you see a design you like, and I say, I say go for it, just give it a shot. I mean, the worst thing is that what? You blew 50 bucks and then you'll live, you'll live to fight another day. Ivan wants to know if I have any P Bandai kits and if I'm planning to review them. Yeah, of course I have P Bandai kits. In fact, I have some in this room right over there. Actually, I'll get them for you so you can see. Yeah, so if, like, for example here, this is Master Grade Amazing Exia, P Bandai exclusive. Still unbuilt, still sealed. Uh, I can't remember why I didn't build it, which is surprising because this is my favorite design from Build Fighters. I don't know. Speaking of which, I never did get around to reviewing the Dark Matter. Huh. That's something I should do. I also have this here, the Tall Geese 3. Now, I don't, I'm not the biggest wing fan, but I love the Tall Geese 3. Easily my favorite non-Gundam mobile suit design, we'll say. Uh, I think it's glorious. I also love Zex. Zex is awesome. But, um, yeah, this is half painted. I think the inner frame is painted, and I think that's where I stopped. I meant to get this reviewed like a year ago, but I don't know. I procrastinated and never finished, so it's half completed in this box. But generally, the story with P Bandai kits is that I tend to buy them all early on and then end up just selling them or trading them away for other things. Because uh, that's just how P Bandai works, right? When they get announced, I get excited and then I hit the pre order button. And then when they come out, it's like, oh, this is a mistake. But I ended up keeping it and then eventually getting rid of them. For example, this month I, re -or I ordered the uh, reissue of the real grade Astrea F type. Will I actually keep it? I don't know, but hey. I bought it. Alice wants to know if I'm watching Kobayashi's Dragon Mage and if I like it as much as Little Witch. Uh, I'm not watching Dragon's Maid. In fact, I'm not watching that much anime this season. I'm only watching Little Witch and... What's the other one? Yomushi Pedal because I love cycling. And I love cycling anime, so there you go. But I, I do want to get to Dragon's Maid. I've heard nothing but great things. I heard it's like this year's Konosuba, so I love that. And I'm sure I'll love... Dragon's Maid, um, I'll definitely get to it when I have more time. Graystorm asks if I've played Nier Automata or Automata. And short answer, no. I really want to play that. I also want to play Horizon Zero Dawn. Unfortunately, I picked up Zelda instead, so I don't really have the time to playing those other two games just yet. I still haven't beat Zelda, mind you. I mean, I'm like 60 hours in and 
I'm not done that game. And then after that is Mass Effect is out tomorrow. And, you know, I've I read a couple of those questionable reviews and uh, I don't really care. I'm a big Mass Effect fan. I'm sure I'll love it. So, yeah, the way I see it is I'm playing Zelda. I'm playing Mass Effect. And next month I'm playing Persona 5. So Nier and Horizon are going to be two games that I'm going to have to push back until... I don't know, the summer when there's no games out. So that's how I'm going to have to deal with that. Owen asks what my most prized figure toy or model is in my collection. Short answer, I don't have one. Uh, to me, toys are toys. And that's really it. I, I buy them, I play with them, I have fun with them, and I enjoy looking at them. And, and they're cool when they're on display. But beyond that, would I be sad if any of them were to be stolen or lost or is there anything I'm truly proud of? Not really. I mean... They're cool, but I mean, they're not anything beyond just being a toy to me. And at the same time, as you guys know, like, I don't buy anything that's vintage. I'm not buying anything that's super limited or exclusive. So if I were to, say, lose something or break something or, you know, someone steal something from me, it can easily be replaced. Yes, it'll cost a little bit more than what I originally paid for, but at the end of the day... I can replace it, and that's all that really matters. If there is anything that I own that I find super valuable to me that I would be heartbroken if it was suddenly taken away, it would be my road bike. You mentioned liking the metallic parts of Chogokin and Robot Spirits. Do you own a Metal Build series Gundam? I do own a Metal Build, but it isn't a Gundam. It is the only Metal Build that isn't a Gundam. It is the Lavatane, and I love it. I love Metal Build. Metal Build is crazy good. I just don't want Metal Build Gundams, or at least... I don't want any of the ones that they have released thus far. I did used to own the Exia, but I got rid of it after a while because as much as I love the Exia, it came down to the point where it's like, do I like it more than the amazing Exia? And the answer was no. And so it, it quickly turned into, if I ever buy a Metal Build Gundam, it would only be of a suit that I really loved. And at this point, it would just be from Build Fighters, and that's kind of it. So, Build Strike Metal Build? Sign me up. Amazing Exit Metal Build? Sign me up. Camp for Amazing Metal Build? Oh my god. That's like, my, my dreams have been answered. And it's, as it stands, no, Metal Build Gundams, with the ones that are currently out and the ones that are currently announced... I have no interest. Erwin wants to know my thoughts on the Michael Bay Transformers films. I think they are fun summer movie action blockbuster popcorn flicks. Uh, if you have a group of friends and you want to just have a fun time and watch giant robots smash into each other, I can't think of a better thing. Well, actually Pacific Rim was better. But regardless, it's still just, you know, a big budget movie with some of the best, if not the best CG you know around in the film industry and it's it's cool to see it also helps that i'm a big car fan so i love seeing the real world cars that they're using and how they've been slowly integrated and worked into these giant transforming robots i know for a lot of fans the actual car component doesn't mean squat but for me it does a lot like it does a whole lot i think it's a fun it's a, it's a fun film series i think the thing that for me really works about it is that it's it's not the original 84 cartoon, and it's never tried to be that, and it's never said it was going to be that. And I think with that mentality, I I am able to just sit down and enjoy the dumb movie. <laughs> My favorite Tekken character is the Taekwondo master from South Korea, Hua Rang. He's pretty cool. I also like Kazuya, and every now and then I'll play Lily, but... Wow, Rang is my character. And the final question is, what do I think about robots with feminine features? Not like Frame Arms Girls, but Mecha with larger thighs or just an overall female look to them. Uh, I don't really understand what you mean by feminine features, but not overtly feminine because things like larger thighs, we'll say, I could, you could attribute that to any sort of Mecha design. And to me, to me, if a robot looks cool, a robot looks cool. It doesn't, I don't think I have a preference if it looks female or if it looks masculine or if it is short or fat or, or thin and tall. Like to me, it's just, if a robot looks cool, a robot looks cool. Uh, unless you're saying, you know, what's that old super robot from a zinger that looks like a chick? The one with the boob missiles. That's clearly a girl. And that's kind of weird. Aside from that, I think, you know, Robots don't really have a, a gender that you can pin to them. They're just robot designs, and, and, and that's really it. If a robot looks cool, it looks cool. 
All right, that's it for this edition of TV3. If there's anything in this week's episode you wanted to talk about, or you just have a general question for me, leave it in the comment section below and I'll answer it in next week's episode. Now you're probably wondering what does someone such as myself do on their birthday evening? Well, I'll tell you. I have told all my friends and family to leave me alone because I have Mass Effect Andromeda preloaded on my PlayStation 4, and when the clock strikes midnight, you can bet that's all I'll be playing. Now I can hear some of the comments out there telling me about how bad the game is well all I gotta say is haters gonna hate I love Mass Effect and nothing's gonna change that